Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're talking about portals. Sun portals. We're talking about those gates described in Enoch in what he calls the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that memorized. You can tell we've been studying that book for a long time. Yeah, you have. Well, in this class, one of our top commenters is asking about these portals. Yeah, see, uh, one of the listeners who we love hearing from uh, is a mother in the faith. Well, turns out she's going to build her a sundial, or she's going to get her husband to build her a sundial, and she's asking questions about these portals, and specifically, she says, how did I figure out the portals on the sundial? Okay, and I see that she's saying, I am not quite understanding that I'm having a Stacy moment. <laughs> A Stacy moment. Okay. What is a Stacy moment? A Stacy moment is when you just don't know and you ask questions and the questions seem to uh, sometimes be simple as, after you ask them. But yeah, I say it's better to ask even if it's a question that seems uh, juvenile. Yeah, even if it's a question that seems sort of juvenile. It's better to ask to get an understanding. And so. act like you know everything. Yeah, to act like, yeah. That's mm -hmm. called humility, right? Is it? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody so, who will yeah. put themselves in a position where they're asking somebody else it has actually humbled themselves. So the Stacy moment is a humility moment. I can I can deal with that. Well, that's a good definition. I'm, I'm glad you were able to define it in that way. <laughs> Okay, so how did you figure out the portals on the sundial? Well, the Elohim told me. Uh, I knew you was going to say that. I say that because it was many, many years of studying the Enoch calendar. Me and the boys built a Enoch calendar out of wood back in 2017. Mm -hmm. But it was only now in the year 2021 did our Father allow us to understand these portals after much meditation and prayer? As we see over here in a portion of the Shepherd of Hermes out of his book called The Visions, where it says right here in verse 112, if you would read that. It says, Wherefore I saw the same old woman in a vision of the night saying unto me, All prayer needeth humiliation. Fast, therefore, and thou shalt learn from the Lord that which thou doest ask. And I fasted, therefore, one day. So this is how. This is the answer to our question is how it was that I was able to figure out these portals is through fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, this is what I did. I fasted, um, meaning I looked for opportunities to do charitable deeds. I afflicted my soul and I spent a lot of time in prayer almost daily asking the father what does these portals mean and finally it was revealed to me that's a very important lesson because it proves that it works it proves that you know by asking the father by going to him in humility not knowing everything allowing yourself to think that you know it all um that it it works if we do what the words say do then it works absolutely all right, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go in and we're going to ac actually explain these portals. We're going to talk about the what, when, where, how, and even the who of these portals as described in Enoch in chapter 71. All right. Now, my goal is, is to keep this simple. Yeah, I don't want to have another Stacy moment. <laughs> <laughs> me neither and like we learned in engineering school many many years ago if you can't explain a complicated subject to your grandmother you really don't understand it yeah you you always say that and it does make sense and you know a lot of us like just the the what is it the meat and the potatoes just give it to us simple and you know, I don't have to have the gravy and all the other stuff. I just want the meat and the potatoes of it. Turns out these portals are extremely simple. Okay. They're not really complicated at all. And I believe that's part of the problem um, with humanity's lack of understanding these portals is that we've been making things overly complicated. Well, when you start talking about, 
you know, just the word portal in itself seems like a, it's about to be a complicated topic. Yeah, I watched a video not too long ago where a guy was talking about the portals of Enoch, and he was actually talking about aliens and stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, your mind immediately goes back to Star Trek and the Sci-Fi Channel, <laughs> and you know, things start to get down. It goes down, go downhill from there. No, nope, that's not what Enoch's talking about at all. He's actually just talking about something extremely simple. But I believe people are fascinated with that kind of stuff because the truth seems to be boring sometimes, mm -hmm. especially to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We prefer science fiction instead of nonfiction. Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, the gates or the portals, and I'll use that word interchangeably, the gates and the portals are only talking about the position of the sun in the sky. Oh, okay. All right. So the portals are... The places that the sun is, I guess, beaming, beaming light or something like that? Yeah, exactly. When you look up in the sky, you'll notice in the wintertime at 12 noon, it seems as though the sun is low in the sky. But then during the summertime, it seems like the sun is really high in the sky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, those are the two extremes of the gates. You're looking at gate one in the wintertime and gate six in the summertime. So there are six gates. There are actually six gates, that's right. And the sun will go through each gate twice in a year. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> now, it was 2017. In fact, the Feast of Tabernacles during 2017 when we built our Enoch calendar. Right. <laughs> but it was only when we started building a sundial in 2021 that we started getting interested in these portals. Right. And that's, in fact, how we actually use the portals. See, we're looking at a sundial here. This is what they would call an equatorial sundial. And these lines on here represent the different gates. Like you said, there are six gates here. Mm -hmm. Because this is an equatorial sundial, this middle gate will fall on the equinoxes twice a year. In March and in September, the sun will be along this line here. You see this notch he has cut out here? Mm -hmm. What this will do is it will cast a shadow, a U-shaped shadow, that will follow this line during the equinoxes in March and in September. So you're saying that there are six gates, mm -hmm. and they will, the sun will go through each gate twice. Twice in a year. Twice in a year, so 12 times. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the sun will change its gate 12 times in a year. So, what you're showing now is just a um, a uh, image of this, and you're pointing out how the the notch will show that you shape. I guess the, like a sort of like an image of the sun moving through the different gates. What I'm showing here is how the gates are actually plotted out on a sundial. See. On the equinox, March the 20th, the sun will rise in the east and set in the west, just like it always does. And the sun will cast a shadow along this horizontal line, starting from the west side, and it will travel to the east side where in the evening as the sun sets in the west. Mm -hmm. Well, at that equinox in March is when the sun will enter what we know as the fourth portal. Or the fourth gate, meaning that it will cross this horizontal line down here and will enter this region right here. Okay. Do you notice how there are six parabolic regions here? Okay. You have one here, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Each one of these are the portals, each one of these are the gates. So after the sun crosses the equinox in the spring, it will enter the fourth portal, which is this one right here. Mm -hmm. And then a period later, it will enter the fifth portal, which is this one right here. Right. And then it will go into the sixth portal. Right. And it will reach its climax, so to speak, during the summer solstice. And when the days are the longest and the sun is the highest in the sky, 
that will be along this line according to this guy's line art mm -hmm. and then the sun will start traveling back in the other direction until it reaches the winter solstice which is the other extreme okay Mm -hmm. I see that. So this what he has here would be a good representation of the six gates, but is only a visual representation because he's actually using the summer solstice and the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. Well, the summer solstice and the winter solstice are not gates in themselves. Do you know what I mean by that? No, explain that. When you say the summer solstice and the winter solstice are not gates. What do you mean by that? Well, let's jump over here to the book of Enoch and let's look at what he says about these gates. Okay. All right. So we're going to jump down to chapter 71, which is the beginning of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. And we see in verse two that he starts talking about these gates in which the sun and the moon travel through. You see in verse 4 how there are six of them like we've talked about. We see down in verse 10 that at the head of the year the sun enters the fourth portal or the fourth gate. But when we look down at verse 15 we see that the sun is only in that portal for 30 days. That's the fourth gate. That's the fourth gate. Okay. It stays in the fourth gate for 30 days and then it goes into the fifth gate where it remains in that gate for 30 days and then it goes into the sixth gate for 31 days and it stays in the sixth gate for 31 days and when you continue this pattern all the way down you see that it repeats itself 30 days 30 days then 31 days 30 days 30 days then 31 days and 30 30 and 31 at the end okay that's that's very interesting it's interesting, but that's not actually how the solstices work. All right. So we said that the summer solstice and the winter solstice are not uh, necessarily portals, right? They're, they're not portals. We see over here in timeanddate.com that the winter solstice is on or about December the 21st. The summer solstice is about June the 20th. And then we see that the equinoxes are on March the 20th and on about September the 22nd. Okay. Now, when you come in and you look at what Enoch was giving us with the 30, 30, and 31 days, they don't line up on the same day. Starting on the spring equinox, when the sun enters the fourth gate on March the 20th, if you go 30 days, you end up on April the 19th. Mm -hmm. If you go another 30 days, you end up on May the 19th. If you go another 31 days, you end up on June the 19th. Okay. But that's not the solstice. So all of those will correspond to the dates that the sun will enter those particular portals. But we see that when it enters the sixth portal on June the 19th, that's not actually the solstice. Okay. And if you continue this pattern all the way down, you see that the sun will enter the third portal on September the 18th. Instead of September the 22nd. Which would be the equinox. The sun will actually enter that particular portal on September the 18th. Okay. So that is why um, the solstice are not necessarily portals. Because they don't enter these at the same date. That's right. So March 20th, April 19th, May 19th, and so forth. These are days that you should be paying close attention to the sundial, right? And the reason that I asked this question is because um, you gave me a list of dates, and these are the dates that are on that list, and you said to let you know, to remind you um, to pay attention to the sundial on these dates. Oh, okay. But the reason why was so that we could actually mark the sundial. Oh, okay. It wasn't necessarily for any other reason except for when it comes to making plots on the sundial, you actually have to do it on that date. Okay. I was thinking that those dates were actually marking something uh, like something important, uh, a celebration or something um, that was happening, but it's not. 
Okay. We'll learn that the celebratory dates that we'll plot will actually be the four seasonal days, which will be June the 19th, September the 18th, December the 18th, and March the 19th. Okay. But anyway, notice that the... Sun will enter the first portal on December the 18th, but the winter solstice is on December the 21st. So that's why I'm saying that this is a okay visual representation of the portals, but it's not accurate because the creator of this sundial actually tracked the sun along the solstices and the equinoxes instead of the portals and the gates. Mm -hmm. I see that. All right. So now let's come over to Stellarium and let's see what it looks like when the sun goes into different portals throughout the year. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to choose the starting date of March the 19th. Mm hmm. And we're going to cycle through the months using the same day, the same year, the same hour, the same minute, even the same second. And we're going to see the different positions of the sun. All right. Let's begin. I mean, does it make sense what we're actually going to do? Um, Why we're doing it like that? Yeah. You sure? You're saying you're going to Stellarium, right? Mm hmm And you're actually... Well, go ahead. No. Explain it to me. Well, the unique thing about the way the Father has set the sun in the sky is that it is a timepiece that's even more accurate than that watch you have on your arm or the clock you have on the wall. I believe that. You could go to the same day and the same month of each year and the sun will be doing the exact same thing. Always. Always. For instance, if we come in here, we're looking at 2021. If we look at the exact same month, day, hour, minute, and second for next year, we see that the sun is in the exact same spot. Same position. Okay. Same position. Mm -hmm. If you keep cycling through the years, it's never the sun will always be in that same spot. We saw the moon pop up there, but the sun is going to be in the same spot. Okay. If you change the day, you'll see the sun start to creep up a little bit. See it moving? Yes. So what we're going to do is just change the month. If it was no such thing as the portals and the gates, the sun would be in the exact same position each month as it was in each year. Okay. But notice when we cycle through that the sun actually changes position. We're looking at the southern part of the sky as if we're standing at high noon, looking towards the sun, we see that in April, at high noon, the sun is higher in the sky. We see in May, it's even higher than it was in April. In June, it's even higher. But then notice in July, it starts to come back down. Yeah, it starts to descend in July. Mm -hmm. In August right. and September. Until you get to December, and December the 12th is close to what? Solstice. That's right, it's close to the solstice. So that's actually the lowest part in the sky. But if you look at January, you see it start to creep back up. So those are your six portals of the sun. You see the highest portal in June, mm -hmm. portal in December. Right. What Enoch is telling us is that if you start on... The spring equinox, the sun will enter the fourth portal. So that's what you're looking at right now is at the fourth portal. And when you go 30 days ahead, you will be in the fifth portal. 30 days ahead, you will be in the sixth portal. 30 days ahead, you will still be in the sixth portal. But when you start, when you go another 30 days ahead, it comes back to the fifth, then the fourth. Then the third portal, and it will continue on in that way all the way around throughout the year. Now, if we look at the days, like we said, you start on the spring equinox is when it enters the portal. And you go 31 days until you get to the next portal. So if we cycle through there really quickly, like I'm doing right now, you see the sun's position in that portal. 
See how it's moving? Mm -hmm. Well, that is the portal. Once we get to April the 19th is when it actually started in the other portal. Mm -hmm. Now, this may be a little hard to see. Let me, ch let me change this right here and run through it again. And it is because of that position in the sky that the sun casts a different shadow each month. Mm -hmm. Each day, actually. Mm -hmm. When you go out there every day, the shadow will be a little bit different. It's because the sun is in a different position in the sky. It's actually in a different portal each month. Wow. It's amazing. So we see here on this line art that you will find on a sundial. This one appears to be what you will find when you just have mm -hmm. a vertical stick in the ground. Right. Well, this horizontal line here represents the equinoxes. Two times in a year, the sun will travel this straight line across the equinox. Mm -hmm. But in the spring, when the days are getting longer, right after the equinox, the sun will enter the fourth gate or the fourth portal. That's this portal right here. Right. And it will stay in this fourth portal for 30 days until it reaches this line right here, which is is the fifth gate that's when it enters the fifth portal or the fifth gate mm -hmm. then it will be in this region right here for 30 days before it reaches this line here going into the sixth portal right and then it'll stay in there for a period of time and then the sun will start going back the other direction okay that makes sense i think that chart right there is actually easier to read than any of the ones you previously showed me this is the chart that you would create if you just went out there with a stick in the ground. And did it month by month. This is the one that will take um, a year to create. There are programs that you can use to actually draw this out using mathematics. But anyway, so that's how it all works. So, you think you understand portals now? I think I have a... Um beginner understanding of portals. Do you think you can explain it to your grandmother? Yeah, I can explain it to my grandmother because she's going to say, I don't want to know all that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> no, the trick is you have to actually make it make sense. You have to know what you're talking about after that. Anybody explain anything to grandma, if she ain't going to listen, she's going to take her hearing aid out. <laughs> She go pop that in, she can push that mute button on that hearing aid. Yeah, you explain it to her all day. But the question is, will she understand at the end of the day? Yeah, I think she will if, you know, if I had you right there by my side. I actually think <laughs> that Grandma would. So you think we can explain it to I Grandma? I think we can explain it to Grandma, yes. <laughs> all right, well, that means we got a little bit more understanding to go on the portals. And I believe we will do another class on these portals where we'll take the time to actually create this diagram on a pole outside. What do you think about that? That should be fun. Yeah, get the kids involved and that should be okay. Yeah, actually find us a good pole, a good stationary pole, and plot out these lines. Yeah, that should be a, a very interesting homeschool class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That would definitely be a good homeschool class. All right, well, I guess we're going to close it out there. Yep, and I hope we um, answered, well, I hope you answered all the uh, questions that these uh, subscriber hat and um, if not they can put their questions down in the comment section along with any additional information they may have or any mm -hmm. statements or anything yeah any of the um, different additional information they had that um, they discovered that would be um, interesting and you know you might can use it in the next class so with that we'll say shalom shalom see you in the next class